shareholder. Their shares are reduced to 15% because of tax evasion. Mr. Sian goes on trial, whatever. 20 years down the line, they can now come back and buy more shares for their family. They can do many things with the company. But when you collapse the company, that's why Duncan Williams is alleging, and we agree with him, that this kind of collapse is motivated by jealousy, is motivated by hatred. It is not motivated by law. No, it's not motivated by law. It's motivated by a personal desire to see another Ghanaian who is succeeding fail. And we have to change that in this country. The generation of people who are listening to me, who are new generation, 30 years and above, you have to have a different mindset that this kind of evil will not be part of your story when you become the people who are leading Ghana 10 years, 12 years, 4 years, 5 years from now. This kind of story where Ghanaians go against themselves and because of a personal hatred for a man or a woman, they have to pull down his company. And then by the time we look around, there's no single Ghanaian company. Every company is Lebanese. The generations of people who are about 40 years old, those who are 36 to 40, maybe 34 to 40, you remember that when we were going to secondary school, you used to shop from a company called A-Life. It was owned by a certain guy, Japan or something like that. A-Life. Yes, they shut it down. For what reason? They said he took some money from Ghana Commercial Bank and the books were dodgy. So they, instead of arresting the man and prosecuting him, they shut down A-Life. And A-Life is gone. It was employing a lot of people. A-Life had cleverly occupied the retail space in Ghana. The import and export for upper, lower upper middle class people was occupied by A-Life. People were leaving down so man to come to Teshinungwa to come and shop, to go to Wesley Girls, to go to Achimota, to go to Empriasu Secondary School, to go to Yasantua Secondary School. Every student who lived in Accra was going to A-Life. There was a queue there. And then what did he do? He put up entertainment at the car park because the queue was very long. So A-Life, when before secondary schools reopened, was like a jamboree. And suddenly they shut it down. Where is that business? Look around, you see. There's one near me here at Metro TV. It's gone to foreigners. The whole A-Life enterprise has gone to foreigners. The lines of A-Life's importation has been given to foreigners. And the foreigners take the money from every Ghanaian who goes to these shops. They exchange it and they take dollars and they send it back to their country. And then we cry that our city is crashing. Your city will crash. Because everything that has to do with the lifestyle of Ghanaians, we have given it to foreigners. Even when our people are in it, we want to pull it down and give it to foreigners. Zoom Lion controls sanitation in Ghana. And there are people who want that to be given to foreigners. When Zoom Lion takes his money, does he, does he export the money? Go and look at what he's doing there. He's built another faculty for KNUST. Will, will a foreigner do that? Will a foreigner come in and hold a business and say that, Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology, I want to build an issue of sanitation for you and build it. Why, why would he do that? If you are a Ghanaian and you are working in Sudan, will you do that? So, as Achampo said, let us give the commanding heights of our economy into the hands of Ghanaians. The reason why this is important is that it is a talent, you see. Not all of us can do it. I cannot do it. Not, not all of us can do it. The man who set up Metro TV, brilliant man, Talal Fatal, what he did, I cannot do. Many people cannot do. It's a talent. So when we identify these talents, we shouldn't chew them up. These are talents that are created by God, mixed in our society, so that they can create for all of us to share. We will all not be like them. They will be richer than us. And we have to start understanding that some people will be richer than us. Even if I'm minister of trade, minister of finance, I'm president, I will not be the richest person in the country as president. Donald Trump, rich as he is, he is not the richest American. Presidency, vice presidency, minister does not give you an equation to become the richest person. So some people will be richer. We have to start understanding that. And I'm talking seriously to the new generation. You have to start understanding that. You're a lawyer, you're a brilliant lawyer, you're a doctor, you're an engineer. It doesn't mean you have to be the richest person. The people who have the entrepreneurial skill, who have the entrepreneurial talent and blessing from God, like Siawa Japan of Zoom Lion, who can create these establishments, we have to support them. See what the Nigerians are doing with Aliko Dangote. Aliko Dangote is richer than all the Nigerian presidents put together. Are they worried? They, they, doesn't, they don't seem to be worried. So it starts from Olusego Obasanjo. Obasanjo goes and Yaradua comes. Yaradua goes and Good Luck Jonathan comes. Good Luck Jonathan goes and Mohammed Buhari comes. And there's not a single situation where a new president is trying with his people. Not even the president, especially the president's people, trying to pull down Aliko. Never has it happened. Aliko has transgressed all of these presidents. He didn't start as the richest man in Africa. 
he grew into becoming the richest man in Africa. He was allowed to do that because presidents come and they identify that Aliko is important to Nigeria. Aliko, how do you want us to help you? If Aliko has a problem, they will deal with it. But you don't pull down the Dangote enterprise, the cement, the sugar, the everything he does. You don't pull, you pull. Dangote employs a huge number of people. Ghana needs only two Dangotes to survive. We have had about 30 of them. Government after government, they throw them away. Starting from Rawlings, and he's the most guilty of this of this this matter. J.J. Rawlings is the most guilty. J.J. Rawlings' regimes is the most guilty of this thing. I hope that he has regretted it by now, because that was dastardly. Pull down every Ghanaian business because you are afraid that they are too strong to take you out of power. That was the reason, as we have read in the books, that they were worried. The military junta was worried that. These businesses will become too strong and they can take them out of power. So you smash every Ghanaian business away. Then businesses started to grow again. And we are still doing it. And that's what the Archbishop is complaining about. So the solution is that we are not saying when Ghanaian companies do wrong, don't do anything about it. But don't pull the business down. Deal with the man, the person who committed the wrong. Because the body corporate is not a human being. It is treated as a human being in some aspects of law. But generally, the, the corporate is not a human being. Metro TV is not a human being. The actions of Metro TV are the actions of the managing director of, the, of Metro TV. You cannot hold the inanimate institution guilty. You can hold the human being who is the director, the chairman of the board, the managing director, the various directors, those whose signatures matter, those who, who knew that they should pay their tax and they didn't, those who circumvented the tax. You can hold them responsible, but you have to keep the institution of Metro TV. And if we have been doing that, well, by now, our city will be saved. Because if the commanding heights of the economy are in the heights of Ghanaians, if the commanding hands heights of the economy are in the hands of Ghanaians, like Buzia said, and like Achampo actually implemented, sometimes we talk about Kutu Achampo in derogatory terms. But if you look at this aspect of Ghanaian life, Kutu Achampo should be, should be given five stars because he it was who became leader of the country and decided that we have to have Ghanaians holding the majority stake in our economy and deliberately went out of his way to create them. B.A. Mensah, Siao, Boachim Matres, he created Ghanaian businesses and left them there. They were richer than him. Yes, they were always going to be richer than him, but that's not the point. So why should all of us be as rich as the businessman? The businessman has a lot to do and he has showed entrepreneurial skill. And we have to recognize that, that God doesn't give that to everyone. So when it is identified, we have to protect it. When they start a small, small business, we can ignore them. But when a man passes through small business and becomes like Zoom Lion, and some people think that you should shut the company down and hand the assets over to a foreigner. I mean, can you imagine that? Do you know that right now the attorney general is dealing with a case in which the assets of BA Mensa, that has been given to a company whose name I will not mention, at the, at the Kaneshi um, uh, Industrial Area, that company inherited all the assets of BA Mensa. The attorney general has a matter before her now where the, the BMS and lawyers are saying that return the assets to us. And the calculation will amaze you. It's over $30 million. It will shock you. The amount of assets that belong to BMS's company, that for reasons of tax evasion, was taken away from him and given to a foreigner, that the foreigner should run it. Today, the people are claiming the money from the government of Ghana. It's such a huge judgment debt. I'm not sure how government is going to be able to pay. But that's the lot of us. And we have to change that. We cannot be economically independent unless the economy of Ghana and the whole financial network is to a large extent in the hands of Ghanaians themselves. Therefore, the Progress Party supports wholeheartedly a policy for the Ghananization of the economy of Ghana.